when you run out of that tunnel on Saturday and your family's here, your friends are here, and you realize it's the last time you'll run out of that tunnel, what do you think is going to be swirling through your mind? I don't really know, to be honest with you. Um, I'm just trying to focus on the game right now and uh, not take it one day at a time. I know it's going to be emotional, but you know, at the end of the day, I still got a game to play, so I'm um, trying not to get too distracted. When you look back at your time here, was there a moment you were able to, to look and say, Notre Dame's not just my school, it's my home? Uh, you know, I was able to say that my sophomore year. You know, say they call this place home. My freshman year, I definitely couldn't call this place home. It was, it was totally different, but uh, my sophomore year, I could call this place home. And um, I think, you know, this year kind of solidified that whole you know, feeling of this place being my home. And, uh, you know, I'm definitely going to miss it. What was it about sophomore year compared to freshman year? I was just new. You know, I was homesick, and uh, I just really missed my family. And then sophomore year, I kind of just embraced everything and understood that you know, if I'm going to be here, you might as well, you know, enjoy it. And so, you know, I kind of finally just let my guard down and, and allow myself to enjoy this whole another game experience, and I've definitely benefited from that. When you look back to your home life, what was it about your, your parents and, and your home that they really instilled in terms of values with you? Uh, they just uh, instilled the, the values of hard work. I'm always trying to stay humble and always, you know, remembering who you are, where you come from, and who you represent. And I've done, try to do my best and and try to do that. And I hope that I've done a pretty good job um, since I've been here. How are you able to balance your faith life coming to a Catholic school as a Mormon? Did you find that challenging? At all? No, not at all. Um, you know, people, you know, people would be shocked to know that you know it doesn't matter what faith you belong to. Um, the Notre Dame community does, you know, a tremendous job in, in helping everybody to grow their faith in whatever faith they believe in, um, whether it be Cat, um, Catholicism, Mormonism, and Buddhism, whatever. And it's a very special place and uh, has helped me to grow. I was talking to Father Doyle from Dillon last week, and mm -hmm. he said how you told him earlier this year how much you miss dorm life and how you love <laughs> dorm life. Yeah. What is it about dorm life here at Notre Dame? Just that? seeing people, you know, just seeing people around, you know, seeing. You know, the freshmen just, you know, wide-eyed and you know, not knowing where to go. And I'm just stepping out of my room and seeing guys, you know, friends just running around. You know, now that I live off campus, you know, it's it's great because I have my own space and I have my own privacy. But I just, it's just different. It's, you know, there are pros and cons to each, each decision. And, you know, it's just happens so having the, the, you know, the downside of living off campus is I don't you know, really experience that, you know, camaraderie, like how I've experienced inside the dorms. Everyone I talk to says how it seems like it's really important for you not just to be friends with your fellow football players, but to find people in Dillon mm -hmm. that weren't on the team to your friends. How important was that to you? Well, it's, it, it's just, it wasn't an importance to me. It's just, it's just who I am. You know, I just, I love to make friends. I um, love to include people. I don't like people to feel um, excluded from anything. Where do you think you are as a person four years ago that maybe you weren't four years ago when you came here? Or now compared to four years ago, sorry. Oh, I'm just, you know, I, I, I try to, you know, embrace everything, experience everything. Um, I don't, I try not to count my days. You know, I try, to, I try to make my days count. I try to, you know, live it every day like it's my last. And I think, you know, as, you know, as a young guy, you don't understand that because you see, that you have four years, and so you're saying, man, I have a, such a long time, you know, and I can do, I can, I can postpone things, I can, you know, just lounge around, but when you know that you have less than two months left, that kind of puts a fire under your butt too. You know, just always stay involved, you know, try and experience as much as you can, um, because soon it'll be over. You said many times how you see football as a career, but how there's more to life than that. Mm -hmm. Where do you see yourself whenever your football career is done? Where do you think life will take you? I really don't know. I really don't know specifically what I'm going to do. Um, but I know I have to do something with my family, um, something with having an impact on people, because um, that's what I want to do. You know, I, football is just going to provide me with a background, you know, a platform that I build on. Um, other than that, my life will go on. and. 
I don't know where it's going to take me, but hopefully it takes me somewhere good. How yeah. important is it to be in a photo sign? And the people like that who are still forming themselves. Well, it's definitely important because, you know, as we all know, you know, we're all young kids once upon a time, and we all looked up to somebody. And uh, I think, you know, some young kids don't have that an opportunity to, you know, look up to somebody. And, um, you know, they have dreams. Everybody has dreams. And sometimes it just takes one person to tell them that they can do it in order to, to fulfill those dreams. So if I can be that one person, you know, hopefully I can get in contact with them and have an impact on their life. Seems like at a lot of schools and star football players, the fans, the student body in particular, feed off the player. Mm -hmm. so it seems like in your case, you like to feed off the student body as well. I, I, it's just you know my way of giving back to the students. You know, I've, I've always wanted like it goes back to me saying I didn't want anybody to feel excluded from anything. You know, I think you know our our success as a football team um, is a direct correlation to you know our our relationship with the students. And, you know, the more that the students love the players, uh, the more support we're going to get and the more support we feel, the better we're going to play. So um, I definitely appreciate all the support we get from the students. And um, you know, I feed off of that energy, and I know all of our players do too. With Bridget Smith, we wrote the letter to the family. Mm -hmm. um, what what compelled you to write back? I'm sure you get lots of requests. What compelled you to write back to them? Uh, that, was, that was actually, you know, one of the very few requests I got at the time. And it was just something that hit me, um, you know, going through what I was ex I was experiencing at the time, and I just lost um, my girlfriend at the time to um, leukemia, and then I lost my ground my grandmother to you know just you know old age. Um, so you know, I was going through it a lot, and I know that you know usually when you reach out and help somebody, it helps you more. And so you know when I was presented with that with that situation, you know I just felt compelled to. Uh, you know, just reach out and let them know that, you know, everything's going to be okay. And that, you know, we may not understand things right now, but, you know, God has a purpose. You know, Heavenly Father has a plan for all of us. And um, we just got to have faith and know that, you know, one day we'll see all our loved ones again. Well, man, thank you for your time. And Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. All right. Thanks, man.